Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BJ Tech News, and yeah, there are more than five Linux operating systems out there. I was basically taught that Ubuntu, Fedora, and Red Hat were the primary operating systems for the Linux world. And I did a little research, and believe it or not, there are so many Linux platforms out there okay and today I'm gonna do a first boot with you guys and don't kill me because I probably am saying the, you know the name wrong and it's Manjaro Manjaro it's an operating system it's a Linux platform operating system uh, and I'm doing a first boot with you guys I'm actually gonna provide this link at the bottom at the description so you guys could uh, go check it out download it and for those that are watching this video and have tried this operating system, hey, let me know your thoughts because this is pretty awesome. Uh, I have a virtual machine up and running and I already have the ISO already mounted to it. And this virtual machine, I'm giving it one, mem one gig of memory and one processor. And let's, let's start this. Let's start this virtual machine first boot with you guys. This is pretty exciting. Look at this. Pretty fast, pretty simple. All right. So, let me get into this and I want to I want to start Manjaro. I think that's how you say it. Linux. Let's start this bad boy up. I mean, this this dude looks pretty mean and pretty efficient, you know. Op, uh, Linux operating systems in my opinion are the best operating systems out there. Uh, because they're they're free, they're open source, and you can do so much more if you know how to mess around with the commands and know how to manipulate using scripting tools. Uh, don't get me wrong, I am I am a person that work with PCs every day, but uh, I I try my hardest to push out Linux servers on the floor as much as possible. Like I have a Linux file system that I uh, distributed for our Mac users because you know the Mac computers are about 95% Unix I don't even know what the other 5% is I think the other 5% is just looking good so it looks like it's loading up uh, like always these Linux operating systems normally come with a live uh, CD mode so you basically boot you can boot into the ISO or the CD and uh, you're able to play around with it Bef you, you could do a test drive before you install it that's one of the things that the PC lacks right so it's basically welcoming me uh, it's giving me a password and a root password which is pretty awesome I'm just gonna close this and uh, close this as well but the Pat Mac, I don't even know what that is, but uh, I'm gonna actually install it on my virtual machine. So I'm gonna double click on this and uh, English. Sometimes I can't speak it correctly, but it's okay. Let me hit forward. Uh, let's pick my location, and I, I'm not there. There you go, I'm there. Let's go to forward. This is one of the things I like about this. I'm still within the same operating system environment. I haven't. It hasn't rebooted and gave me this installer kind of menu thing, which is pretty cool. English, yes. Uh, use this box to test your keyboard layout. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen this in within Fedora or Ubuntu. And let's go forward. Uh, give me a full name. Let's give it uh, BJ Tech News. And let's give it a password. And there we go. And let's give it a host name. Is uh, I don't know. Let's host name is going to be this. This is this is pretty interesting as well. Uh, normally, creating host name, you have to do like a command prompt. Well, I was taught always do it a command prompt. With this setup and configuration, with this operating system, it looks like you can actually do it during the installer process uh, you can select the picture let's see what kind of pictures this bad boy has this is pretty funny this is actually like the mascot of the Linux world he's 
pretty funny. This is so, oh, I like this dude right here. Looks crazy. I'm gonna pick him. And let's go forward. And it, it has all the hard drives. I only have one hard drive. And we're gonna do forward. No partition shape was found on the hard drive. Do you want the installer to create a set? Yep, I do. Let's hit yes. It's gonna erase all the data. You know, it's it's a clean hard drive. Awesome. And we're, oh, there it goes. There it goes. I got it. I don't know what I just did, but for those that do understand what I just did, please let me know. I think I double clicked on it. Uh, I chose the mount as the root format was the X ext4 pressed ok and then I did the 4 and I was able to go by uh, <laughs> again this is the first boot I've never actually got to this point of doing a Linux platform that I actually had to manipulate the partitioning manually and normally does it by itself uh, install the group bootloader yeah let's do that let's go forward uh, a basic summary and we're gonna hit install and let it do its thing oh my god it's pr that's pretty fast and we're back yes uh, it's installation is finished for this Manjaro I believe Linux operating system I know I I, I know I'm a hundred percent sure that I'm actually saying this wrong um, <laughs> So uh, installation now is completed. Do you want to restart your computer? Heck yeah, let's restart the computer. And once it restarts the computer, uh, I am going to do this. And I'm going to dismount my ISO because I don't need it anymore. And let's, uh, let's boot this bad boy up and see how it looks. Man, this is pretty exciting. We actually saw how it looks. But uh, I didn't really get to poke around and see how it really, really looks. But let's see once it starts up and loads up, we can log in. Okay, so we in. We got a nice little user interface right there. That's pretty cool. This is pretty interesting too. You got the kind of desktop and language option. Cool. Uh, what's the difference between this and this? I do not know. Uh, so let's log in. Let me put my password that I entered during the installation process. Gotta remember it. If you don't remember, you're gonna not log be able to log in. And there we go. We're logging in. First boot of Manjaro. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, again. I'm going to be shooting more of these videos out because there's so much more out there dealing with Linux. It's not only uh, Jintu or Fedora or Red Hat or Ubuntu or Linux Mint. There's so much more out there. I just, it's amazing. I was so amazed to find out that there was so much more out there. Uh, let's see if we could change. Desktop was desktop settings as background uh, adjustments. See, everything is all different. So let's click on this. All right, all right. Let's go to settings. We need to go to display because I need to change the display. Let's do 1280 by that. Keep this excellent because I want to see this in the body. This is pretty cool right here. This looks like more of a little Mac kind of environment. I'm kind of intrigued or uh, kind of impressed that they got the Steam. They got VLC. This is pretty. Uh, they got the little nice little bouncy just like the Mac platform. Uh, yeah, save and continue. This is pretty cool. VLC is already embedded within the thing with the operating system. So I'm assuming it can play Flash automatically. Uh, what else it has? I don't Libra Office. This is pretty cool. Look at that. I don't even have to download uh, an Office package. Again, Libra Office is free for operating systems, for Linux operating systems, and it's, it's equivalent to Microsoft Office. But it looks like it only gives me spreadsheet and text document. Oh my god, I haven't seen this in a while. Thunderbird. Oh, Thunderbird is an email client for those that do not know what Thunderbird is. Old school email client. So I'm going to close this bad boy up because I probably configure it 
and later. And it comes with Firefox. I do notice that Firefox come with a lot of operating systems nowadays. I think Firefox is like the mandatory operating system browser. You can't get Internet Explorer. Oh my God, please. Linux, do not, do not have Internet Explorer. Uh, but you, you you normally will have uh, Oprah. Is it Oprah or Opera? I think it's Opera. What what was that? That was my my screensaver. Uh, but I think you get Opera, Firefox, and Chrome. And I know there's others, but those are the only three that I could remember. And uh, I think this is a nice little hammer. It looks like Doris Hammer. Let's click on that. And that's actually my file manager. It's pretty cool. I, you know, I like the the color theme of it. This is pretty cool. But you know, I can't I can't really give you full details of it. You know, so far it's running pretty smooth. I'll probably play around with it a little bit more. I do like the little docking system. It gives me the whole feel of the Mac environment kind of thing. Uh, it still has like the the multiple windows as this. A lot of a lot of the Linux operating systems do have that. But if you guys have tested this out or have this in your home um, environment, is this your primary operating system? Hey, give me some feedback feedback right below and let me know what you guys think. You know, why did you choose this operating system rather than the other ones that are out there? Uh, again, I'm going to be doing some more future Linux operating systems, uh, which is out of the ordinary that a lot of people won't see or find. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video, first boot, and uh, give me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.